thanks. Yeah. Oh. Hello, Peter CSS and St. Petersburg. Uh, it's my first time here. It's really, really cool conference and cool city. Um, so this talk is not so much of a talk. It's called Ready, Set, Go, uh, Live Coding an Action Game from Scratch. Um, as uh, Vitaly said, my name is Mathieu Henry. I go online as P01, and I'm a, an engineer at Microsoft where I do serious things. Uh, yeah, I work on the profile card in Office 365. So it ships to millions of customers, it's really serious, but uh, in my spare time I like to do uh, less serious things to make small games. And uh, yeah. In the picture is my daughter, uh, she also likes to write game, and this is one of our sessions in the code club uh, where she made a game with her friends from elementary school. Uh, so here are a couple of examples of uh, games I like and that are pretty fun to play and to write. Uh, they're all action games from ranging from the 80s to very recently. Uh, so you see there's lots of actions, things moving around and so on. And uh, today, uh, I would like to write a, an action game uh, here on stage. Uh, something called a twin stick shooter, uh, where you control a character and where you shoot and you move around and there's many people coming at you and you try to survive as long. Uh, here is what it looks like when I have a bit more than 30 minutes to polish it. Uh, this is me playing now. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's really addictive. So, live coding. Um, just to be clear, uh, this is about what we, what about you, can do with the web platform. This is not about me pulling tricks or anything. This is really just to to show what we can do when we forget our constraints, uh, don't have to ship to customers and everything. It's about having fun with a platform. Um, so. Let's start. Um, when I live code, uh, I start from a very uh, a small uh, setup, like a small web page. Can you see well in the back? I take that as a yes. <laughs> uh, so I start from a, a very small HTML page, which is just a body canvas uh, with a little bit of background. Uh, so nothing special, and it loads a file called live.js, and here it is. So just uh, get a couple of constants to get the canvas, a 2D context, and a random method to, to be a bit quicker. Uh, so I have uh, the page open locally with a dev tool at the bottom, and we can start. So to make a game, first I need a, a game loop. Uh, it did not start. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so first, I need a, a game look. So I will need something that uh, ticks every every frame. Uh, so that uh, and to make the game loop and render the uh, the game at every frame, I call request animation, request animation frame on it. Um, I want each frame to reset my canvas. Um, 256 would be okay. It's like a small square uh, because we will do some pixel things. Um, uh, I will, I will get the time to know where we are. Uh, use performance dot now. Uh, the background is pretty dark, so I will just use the fill style in white and draw the time at sixteen by sixteen. And we need to uh, start ticking on load. So on load. So we have uh, the time in our render loop. Uh, the time is in milliseconds. It's a I prefer to have it in seconds because it's, uh, it goes a bit less fast and it's easier to, to reason in seconds than milliseconds when you're thinking about a game and things happening. Um, next thing we need, um, we are going to make a game, so we need some state for our game. Uh, so we can just create a simple JavaScript object that will hold that state. Uh, one thing we can put is the size of a field, the time, and the score, because it's a game after all. Um, and then uh, when we reset the canvas, I can grab it from a state. And when I get the time, I can assign it to a state of a game. And there as well. Nothing has changed, that's 
tool. Um, to make a game, I will need some uh, inputs. So I will need to uh, listen to the keyboard and get the state of which keys I am pressing down, because uh, you saw the game that uh, I want to make. It's about moving a character around and shooting all around, and so I need to know which keys are pressed at any given time. So we need a small, um, a small object that contains all the keys, and I need to uh, listen to the key down events and store that in the my key down object. I can check the key of the event uh, property and assign one. That will be OK. Um, and on the key up, I will assign zero. And that will be our I.O. Uh, to see what we did there, uh, let's display every um, do, 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 every uh, members or every keys in that object. Font size, OK. Right, OK. Um, so I um, will display the list of the keys that are pressed now. So, oh, but yeah, it keeps track of all the keys. It doesn't tell me the keys that are down now. It tells me every keys that I did press. Uh, uh, the fix is just to delete uh, the key when I key up. So if I don't press anything, nothing. If I press some key, ta -ta -ta -ta, we see the list. This is nice. Uh, so that will come handy to know which keys are pressed at a given time to move the character around. Uh, so again, this is a game, so we will need some sprites. Uh, I made a sorry about that. I made a small sprite sheet, uh, which is very similar to what we do in CSS. So it's just a big image with. Uh, uh, Every 16 by 16 pixels, there is an image uh, which is used to know uh, the sprite number zero. Uh, number zero, sorry, is a is a player. Number one is a bullet, and from two and up are the players. And if I go down, uh, I go through four frames of my animations. So I need first to load uh, that uh, that sprite sheet. So I need to create a new image, and at the end I can load it. And it's called sprites.png. And of course, when it's loaded, I can start again. Um, nothing happened because I'm not using the, the sprites. Uh, so here I can, um, I will display the sprites in the center of the screen. Uh, so the center is game state the size divided by two. And I can do use the draw image function of the canvas to say um, draw the sprite, uh, sprite sheets at the coordinate center, center. So now we see all my sprite sheets uh, rendered or displayed at the center of the screen. Uh, what I want to draw is just one sprite. So I need to get sprite number, let's say zero, and a frame. For the animation, I will start also at zero. And so the sprites are or, uh, ordered horizontally. So if I want to display the player, so it's for a sprite zero. If I want to display the bullet, it's a sprite one, but it's times 16 because every sprite is 16 wide. And the frames are also 16 pixels tall. And they are all 16 by 16 pixels. And again, uh, the destination is at the center center, but I, want, I need to specify at which size I display them. And I will just display them at the same size. So now I just display one sprite. And if I want to animate, uh, I can just grab the time. And if I want one frame per second, and I have four frames, so I can do uh, the binary and three to make sure that the values are uh, nothing else than 0, 1, 2, 3, because this is the byte of the bits that are enabled or allowed with this uh, bit flag. So now I have. Sorry. So now I should have one frame per second animation. And this is really slow. Uh, if I do times 8, think, 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 you see the little guy is starting to wiggle around. Uh, 
One thing, I don't know if it's clear on the screen, uh, it's not exactly in center. Uh, uh, it's because I, s I display this sprite from the center, but that's the top left corner that's specified. So I need to to delete half the size of my sprite, so minus eight, just to be sure it's center. It's nicer. And just to be a little bit sure that I display the that can show all the sprites, I can do uh, the times time something, uh, and I can if I do a modulo six because I have six sprites in total. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, well, 6 including 0. Uh, and then I do the binary OR with 0 to make sure that it's a cast to an integer. Uh, then I should see all the sprites cycle through. OK. So now it's time to actually uh, work with uh, or define our the entities of our game. Uh, so all the characters, everything in our game is an entity. It has uh, a position a velocity, so where it's moving, some energy, and a sprite. So we can create a small class that contains all these properties. Uh, that will be the entity class. Uh, so the constructor will have uh, the sprite, the x and y coordinate, the energy, and the velocity in x and y. Uh, OK, let's pass all these to this. If someone knows a more efficient way to do this, <laughs> please tell me. <laughs> um, every of, or each of these entities, uh, so they have a constructor, so I can create a new entity. And I need to be able to, uh, well, they need to be updated at every tick of our game. So the, the most basic update is uh, to move the entity. So uh, let's create the update method. And the, to move the entity is just to do uh, its x coordinate uh, add the, the velocity in x and something in y. Uh, add the velocity in y to the, uh, to the y coordinate. And we need a render method. Uh, the render method doesn't take anything. It's just about uh, displaying the entity. And we did that more or less here. So I can copy paste. So in the render method of the entity now, uh, this is this dot sprite. This is the sprite of this entity. Uh, the frame would be, yeah, we can also keep using the time. And uh, the coordinates are not the center, but uh, this dot x and y. So now we have an entity class which does the basic things. Uh, let's create uh, an example entity. Uh, I would say the sprite zero at the center, center, uh, 100 points of energy, and not moving. I'm just aligning a bit better. Um, yeah, I, I use uh, the center and the size a lot, so I will just put them in global. Don't do that in prod. <laughs> Uh, so I was, I just created a, an example entity uh, yep, to see how that works. So now I can remove all this in the tick, um, so, oh, update and render the entity. So we can do ex dot date and ex dot render. So nothing should really change now uh, if I. OK, we just had one entity which uses the sprite uh, 0. Yes, I said 0. It's in the center. It has 100 points of energy, and it's not moving. Fine. Let's create a player class now, because uh, we need a player. And the player is, is basically an entity, but it's a little bit special. Um, so the constructor for a player would be, maybe we just pass the energy of a player, and everything else is pretty much the same. So we can do copy this. Oops, sorry. And we can call the super constructor, or the constructor of the 
of a base class, which is entity. Uh, so sprite zero, the center, and here we just pass the energy that we pass to the constructor. Uh, and now, instead of creating a, an example entity, we can create a player in our game state. And we will give it 100 points of energy. So again, nothing should really change, except that I am not uh, updating and rendering a player. I'm updating and rendering the, uh, the example uh, entity that I created before. So now nothing changed, really. Uh, so let's make this player move around. So to do this, uh, I can update or modify the update method from the base or from the entity class in the player. And let's move with uh, the arrow keys. So, so the arrow keys, when I press them, it says arrow up and down in, uh, in camel case. Um, OK, so I, I will just need to start from the no velocity for the player. And I need to check uh, which keys are down in my game state. So arrow up. If the arrow up is down, is pressed, then I need to do to subtract one to the velocity in y so that uh, next tick the player will move by one pixel up vertically, so minus one vertically. And we do now to when we press the arrow down, then we will increase, uh, we give one to the velocity, and th then the player will move by one down. And then we duplicate this code for uh, the left and right. And this is now about the x and the y. Nothing happens because I did not call the update method from the, the entity class. Uh, so now the character is moving around. Uh, OK, that's nice. Uh, what we need is then uh, to shoot around. We need to create uh, some bullets. And that uh, when pressing WASD, uh, the classic first person shooter uh, keys, uh, that when you press WASD, that it, it creates bullets in that direction. Uh, so first, let's create a bullet class. A bullets, again, they extend the, uh, the entity. And uh, in their constructor, all they need is uh, their origin and the velocity. The, we can say that they always have one point of energy. So. Uh, x, y, and z, x, v, y. And then we can do, we call the constructor of the, the entity class. The sprite is with number one. Oh, we pass one point of energy, uh, which you see here. Uh, OK. Thanks. Um, so we have our bullet class. But we will need a list of all the entities in the game uh, that are not the player uh, in our state. So let's add an array of entities to our game. And we will also need to render them all. So back to our tick method, uh, which does everything uh, about the game. And we can, for each uh, entity, we call update and render. Uh, this is nice. We have a bullet class. We have a list of entities. We render them, or we update them. We render them. But we are not creating bullets yet. Uh, so to create bullets, that would be in the, in the update method of our player. So uh, when we are updating the, or handling the logic of a player, uh, I need to check, am I pressing uh, the other set of keys? and to which velocity of a bullet or which direction am I actually shooting at. Uh, and the code looks very much like this, so I can copy-paste. And now it's not uh, move with the arrow key, but fire away with uh, WESD. And I can do 
rename this with b, uh, b for bullet and v for velocity, then x and y. And uh, I will put them in let. Um, so this is when I am shooting up, so that will be the w key. When I am shooting down, the s key. When I'm shooting left, a. And when I'm shooting right, d. And then I need also to check, is any of this uh, bullet velocity uh, pointing anywhere, or are they both 0? If, if they are trophy, if they are not 0, if any of them is not 0, uh, I can create um, a new bullet. And this new bullet needs to start from the origin or for the position of a player, because it's a player shooting, at the, shooting them, uh, and in the direction that I just computed with uh, these things. So now I should have bullets. Uh, they look strange, uh, because they, they are like two by two pixels, and they move at one pixel at a time. They are, uh, I need to space them out or to make them go faster. I can just change the velocity offsets from 1 to 4 so that they go at 4 pixels per frame. So now it looks like this. Great. I have a list of entities. Um, how many? Like, do you know how many entities there is now? I have no idea. There should be one now, right? It's only oh, zero. It's the player and no, nothing else. Uh, but because uh, when, when we start to check the collisions with the robots, things are going to get a bit messy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm shooting, and the number of entities here is not decreasing. They, I'm not destroying them. Uh, so in the update method of the bullets, I need to check if they come out of the screen. And if they do, uh, I need to reset their energy. So I can do this by checking if the x is less than 0, or the y is less than 0, or uh, the x is greater or equal to the size, or the y is greater or equal to the size. In which case, I set the energy of a bullet to zero. Okay, uh, and I need to call uh, the update method uh, from the, the base class. Uh, so now I set the energy of a bullet to zero, but yeah, I don't remove them from the array. Uh, so to remove them from the array, I can filter the list of entities to only keep the ones that have some energy. So I, I do game entities or game state entities filter, and I only keep the ones that have some energy. Now, when I shoot, okay, it goes back to zero. Cool. Uh, okay, ten minutes. Now we need robots. I mean, <laughs> it's uh, it's not really fun like this. Uh, so we need a, a robot class, which is also an entity, so it extends the entity. Uh, the robots, uh, they will just start at a random position, and I will pick a, a random robot, like one of these four uh, with different colors. Like uh, So in the constructor, um, Call super constructor. Yeah. Um, the sprite is the number two from the uh, zero, one, two, and up. Uh, I want a random position in the size in x and y. Uh, for for now, one point of energy, and I will not then make them move. And let's uh, let's create a bunch of robots. What is that? Uh, let's put 16 game state entities. The push new robot. So now we have 16 random robots. Uh, they are all of the same type. Uh, so let's pick a type. There are four different ones, and I need an integer because uh, I don't have. If I try to display the sprite 3.5, it's gonna look funny. So now I have yes, okay, random robots. Um, 
I, I would like these robots to be like distributed in a in a nicer way, like so that they are more green robots, which are easy to to destroy, and the but more red they are, the more difficult uh, they are, and the more rare they are. Um, the random function math.random returns a number between zero and one. Uh, if we elevate that number to a power, if we do math power uh, number between zero and one and a power, uh, what it will do is will it will take uh, the mapping for the number, and we basically apply an exp uh, exponential, and it will just bend the curve, and that way we can uh, get a nice distribution. And there is a new operator in JavaScript, uh, the star star, which is equivalent to math.pow. And if we do four, then that would give us uh, much more green robots, a few yellow ones, really, really few orange, and hardly any red ones. OK, nice. Um, and the energy of the robots can, be also, uh, can also depend on, uh, on this. So we can do four times the type. So what the, uh, the red robots have more energy. And we, we can display that uh, in the random method. We can call super the render of the entity class. Uh, we can display with that energy uh, at the coordinate of the plus a few pixels uh, at the position of the robot. So we should see how much energy points each robot has. OK, great. Uh, now we need to check uh, collisions, like wh when do, do these entities collide and everything. Uh, so I need to update the base entity class. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't I could do it in the robots class, but uh, let's do it here. Uh, so I need to get the distance from in the entity class. I need to get the distance from this entity to another entity to know if they are how far they are, in which direction, if they are close to each other. Uh, so I can do this X. Uh, so I need to know uh, the position in, in X to know like is this entity or which side is it compared to the other entity. So I need to do uh, this X minus over X to know the position relative in X and the same in Y. And I can return this thing, this object. And we can use that to make the robots move towards the player. Uh, in the so for the robots, uh, we can create an an update method, uh, which will get the distance from the robot to the player. Uh, at the end, we need to call the update method of the base class, and we can use the the distance in x, or the relative position in x and y of the robot to the player, as the, it gives us the direction of the player. So the robot should move towards the player. Uh, then we can do use the sign of this thing to know if the, if the velocity uh, should be minus one or plus one, depending on which side is the player and the robot. OK, wrong sign. It's okay, classic. Uh, yeah, so now they're all moving to me, and that's not really fun. Uh, it should be a bit less hard. One way to, uh, to make it a bit more fun is to randomize uh, so that they don't move like straight to me. Uh, I can just set the velocity uh, only if it's like uh, in 20% of the case, in 0 0.2 out of 1, uh, else I just set uh, no velocity. So now we should, yeah, it's a bit better. OK. Um, and I can shoot still. OK. Um, to shoot, I also need, well, I would like, yes, sorry. Um, I would like the robots to uh, basically take out some energy from the player when they touch the player. Uh, and uh, let's display the. Uh, the energy, uh, pardon, pardon. Uh, the energy of a player and also the score because this is a game. Now, when uh, we check the distance, uh, 
uh, we get the distance to another player or another entity. Sorry. Uh, I would like to know if it's close enough or if, uh, if they are touching, so I can pass uh, distance uh, because the sprites themselves, like really what the, the pixels, they are 8 by 8. I just put 16 by 16 to have a bit of margin. Um, so I want to know when uh, the robots touch the player or when the bullets touch the robots and uh, the distance is different because the bullets are a bit smaller. So I need to be able to pass that distance. And I want to know, is uh, the current entity close to uh, the other entity? And the distance itself to the other entity is, uh, maybe you remember Pythagora and the uh, hypotenuse of a triangle? Uh, this is exactly that. Uh, this new math uh, method gives us the, the distance between uh, of a vector x and y. And if it's uh, lower than the distance, then we have uh, it is closed. And something we will need is to know uh, how much energy this uh, impact will actually have. Like, uh, if a robot touches a player, by how much do I need to decrease the energy of a player and the energy of a of the robot? Uh, and that's the minimum of uh, wizard energy uh, over the energy. And I will need to return that. OK. Um, now, in the, in the robot updates, uh, I can check if uh, this dist is about the player. So if this dot is closed, it means that the robot is touching the, the player. So I can do game state dot player dot energy minus energy uh, that we just calculated, which is the energy of the impact. I can do, I need to decrease the energy of the robot itself by this same amount. And at the end, we need to check uh, if there's no energy left on the robot, uh, we need to, uh, to spawn a new robot. Uh, bam. No. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> um, I also need to check the why. Sorry, I'm just trying to quickly debug this. No, nope, it's not work. Uh, sorry? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh no. That happens when you get nervous and In the robots, we, we just checked uh, <laughs> of course I call uh, I close VS code which had my terminal running the the app. Okay. So you see that it destroys some of the robots, but it also, also takes out some energy from the player. Uh, let's quickly check the bullets and we will wrap up. In the, in the robots, in the update. Now I will go through all the bullets, or all the entities. 
Deutsch. And now I need to check uh, the same thing, basically. Uh, if the entity uh, is, a, is a bullet, then like, and it has some energy, and the robot itself has some energy. Uh, I can check the distance to it. Uh, it only needs to go about five pixels. And again, same story. If uh, if it is close, we decrease the energy of uh, the entity we just did. And, and there we go. And at the end, uh, when the robot has no more energy, we need to increase the score. Yay! So it does destroy the robot. Um, one little thing, uh, when the robots die, it should create a new robot, but it does not. Sorry. Mm. Nice catch, of course. Anyways, demo effect. Um, right. Let's. Uh, yeah, let's show you uh, what I had when it went uh, during one of the practice uh, of Doc. <laughs> uh, so this is what it looks like when I don't mess up <laughs> and, uh, and close my terminal. Um, Right. So, yeah, live coding is tricky, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, it, it serves a purpose. It serves to to show that uh, it's possible to do something fun and cool, um, but it doesn't take too much to to make something pretty neat. Um, and uh, with a, with a bit more time, and when you, you're not stressed, uh, you can you can do something like this. Uh, this version I did with like less than an hour more or of time spent on the game. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so so much. Thank you, Mathieu. Well done. Well Thanks. done. Wow. Just imagine having 500 people watching you. Live coding, that's always fun. Yeah. So how, 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 how much time do you need to, to, well, to train or to rehearse before doing that? Um, Just a couple of times, or do yeah. you have a script? Uh, yeah, there's a script, uh, which I forgot to put on my phone. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, this is, yeah it's, of course, I don't jump sure. on stage and out of the blue live okay. code again. Uh, so I practice. Uh, I've, I've done live coding on stage for, for two years now. Uh, my first one, I did 50 uh, rehearsal, uh, so 50 practice uh, in exactly the time of a talk. For this one, uh, I cut down to about 10, and it's well, okay. except a few hiccups. Okay. Um, I remember really well how at some point, maybe it was five years ago, maybe six years ago, uh, somebody recreated uh, Wolfenstein 3D in JavaScript. And I remember back then, when I saw it for the first time, I felt like, wow, really? You can actually do that? Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering at this point, how far have we come with JavaScript in terms of, like, can we have really interactive games? If you compare, of course, you know, JavaScript games with Unity-based games, mm -hmm. you know, that's world. So where are we going? Is it I mean, with FreeGS and with Canvas and all mm -hmm. this stuff? How, how, how far can we push um, uh, this kind of game, uh, game for yeah. example? Well, you can compile your Unity game to JavaScript. That would be a big JavaScript yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. Right, but, it, but I mean, would it also would run it smoothly? Would it be performant uh, enough if compared to against native? If you go a bit easy on the assets and, and so on, uh, yes, it, it does perform pretty well. Uh, WebAssembly helps a lot, of course, yes, with of course. all the heavy computations and WebGL for the all the rendering. So you, you can make compelling games with the uh, with web now. I okay, think. so what in terms of tooling, uh, are there any particular frameworks that are the frameworks when it comes to more sophisticated, advanced games? Uh, 
for really, really advanced games, I would go with, uh, with Unity or Unreal, which can compile to, uh, to JavaScript or to a web. Yeah. And they have uh, uh, excellent tooling to, to make like, professional games. Uh, if you want to do something a little bit more like, uh, lighter, uh, you could use Phaser, uh, Phaser, Phaser? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, which is an excellent framework with great documentation to make games. Uh, there are uh, plugins to add physics and these kind of things. Okay, to, uh, to also add some like physical properties to objects yes, and things yeah, like that. Gravity, and collision detection. Oh right, right, right. And when it comes to um, performance of games, I mean, when you write all of this and when you yeah. try to move things around, uh, are there any particular performance bottlenecks that show up quite a lot? What do you need to watch out for when building a game of that yeah. of the kind um, for so performance? Yeah. So there's like drawing performance themselves. Uh, you need to pay attention to not draw too many things or go n a bit easy on the, on the uh, effects, like blending modes and so on. Uh, but y you just measure. Uh, well, like this game was pretty simple, but uh, the, the logic was really naive. I mean, uh, in for every robot, I was checking collisions against every bullet. Ideally, you would do some kind of space partitioning to only check the bullets that are in the same sector as you are and these kind of things. Uh, for this example, obviously, I don't have the time or mm -hmm. and it's okay as well. Okay. Um, is there some sort of notion of responsive games? Uh, I mean, we often talk about, you know, we, we, uh, one game is designed and built for iOS and for Android and so on. Um, but again, there is one little thing that we can potentially use on the web, which is responsiveness. Is there some notion of games that are responsive? Or are they designed usually for a particular screen? They, they are usually designed for uh, particular screens. And they, they are you can find online some kind of guidelines about what is the safe area to put your UI. But uh, I don't know examples of particular games, but it's really easy to just, at least for the UI, to spread it out and make it more responsive. For the game itself, I I mean, everything's possible. So you can also change the type of UI that you render. The game logic underneath is exactly the same, or could be exactly okay. the same. And maybe also go easy on the effects, mm -hmm. uh, depending also on the on the inputs that you have. If you're on a touch screen with a coarse, uh, coarse touch or precise touch. Okay, uh, and maybe the very last one. Can you recommend some good resources for people who want to get started in building games with JavaScript? Is there anything like the ultimate resource where you would go to for reference, or just to learn? I, w I would go and check Phaser. Phaser, Phaser. yes, yes. Okay. Uh, it's they have excellent documentation and tons of examples. Okay, so I'm looking forward to the next game, and I know people do not share my passion for fav icons apparently. Which is okay, it's I okay, guess. Okay. I hope that we'll see the version 2 at some point. Yeah, I should make a version 2. Please, right? yeah. please do. And everybody who uh, has not seen it, please check it out. It's a cool little, it's little, tiny little game with a what you can do with Pop Icon. It's Pop Icon is hard to but play, but it's fun. I, I think it's fun. I'm the only person in the room who thinks it's fun, and I'm proud of it. Yeah. I managed okay. to go to a wave so 5 of enemies in different of Pop Icon, if anyone beats me. Yeah, tweet yes. about it. All right, so thank you so much for being here, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.